Hola Data Geeks, thanks for joining me. Today I want to show you just a little quick tutorial that I realize I use all the time and it saves me a ton of problems and it just really, really helps out and I thought it might be useful to you. It's how to actually remove duplicates from a data set. And so here what I have is some data in Excel and the one way I want to do this is I can look at zip codes and what I want to do is get a distinct list of zip codes. So I could do a pivot table and I can do that from insert and pivot table on my other screen. It pops up. It automatically selects the range. That's good. Gives me the new sheet and then I could do zip code and I'll drag it from there down to rows and I have a distinct list. Easy enough, right? So if I just want a unique list, that's one thing. Now, if I wanted to remove duplicates, like let's say this data set, anytime I saw the zip code again or a order number, order ID again, I would wanna remove that row. I know it's a duplicate. Well, I'm gonna do that, but with zip code. So pretend zip codes in this case are order IDs or something that you wanna find dupes of and actually eliminate those rows. So I'm just gonna copy that to a new tab and here what I'm gonna do, I'll give it a title and I'll say dupe question mark on the second one. And it's pretty straightforward. What I'm gonna do first is I want to order these. So I'll click on sort and filter and I'll just add the filter cause I like it's more functional. Then I can click order and ascending. So this is helpful. Then I'm going to actually do a count if. So my formula is equals count if. And the question is, does this zip code, in this case 1001, exist above me? So they're in order, they're in ascending order. So if this zip code exists anywhere above my current row, that means it's a dupe or I'm a dupe. So here we go, I'm gonna go equals if count if, now the range is gonna be all the rows above it. So it's gonna be A1 to A1 in this case. And then if it equals this one, A2, give me a count. So it's gonna be a count of zero. Now, if I were to drag this down a little bit, you can see that we have one right here. So you can see what happened is it only counted the row right above. So it's actually not doing it right. See how it's only counting the one right before? What I actually wanted to do is lock that calculation into the very first row. So instead of A11 here, and just like I had A1 here, which was fine because I was on the first row, I'm actually gonna hold function and hit F4 when I'm selected on that cell. It adds those dollar signs there, and the dollar signs indicate when I move this formula, don't move that cell reference. Keep that cell reference locked in place, and that's important for our formula here. So now when I copy this down, what you can see, if I highlight all that and hit Command D or Control D on Windows, as I scroll down, the actual cell reference continues to be the same. So it's A1 through the actual previous row of wherever I'm at. So this works. So now when I go down to row 12 here, and let me just make that a little bit bigger for you, you can see that just before that on row 11, I have that same zip code. So this one is a dupe. So I'm just gonna go down to the bottom of my rows here on the dupe calculation, double click on the little corner, and it'll copy it all the way down. And when I go down to the bottom, you can see, yeah, some of these are you know um, far and above. There's seven times on the zip code. So in order to make this an actual binary calculation to kind of stick true to it, instead of having the total count, like one, two, three, four, or whatever, I'm gonna change this to be an if statement that will actually return a one if it is a dupe and zero if it is not, regardless of how many times or how many other dupes there are. So if my count if here, that statement returns something greater than zero, meaning if it's one, two, three, four, anything greater than zero, then show me a one, meaning that that calculation, that expression was true. Otherwise, show me a zero, meaning it was false, meaning it's not a dupe. I hit okay and notice it's a zero. When I copy this down, you can see row 12 here, it's still a one. And when I double click this and it goes all the way down to the bottom, so as it creates a calculation and finishes it off. Now when I go down to the bottom, I don't see one, two, three, four, whatever. I see just one or zero. Okay, so we're there essentially, right? Now I'm going to copy this and I'm going to do a paste values. 
That way it doesn't change as I modify this here. Even though it shouldn't matter, I just like to do that because calculations, especially ones like these where they're dependent upon the order in which the data is and everything like that, I just want to eliminate the the chance that there will be an error when I when I when I actually remove some data here. So now I'm just going to uncheck the zero and I have essentially all of my dupes. I highlight those, all the rows there, delete the rows. Once that finishes its calculation, go back and clear my filter, or I'll just you know, hit clear filter. And I have it, I have a clean data set. I just use zip codes here, those could be order IDs, you could have order and date, of something like that. I do this often with financial data where you have the amount, the vendor, and the date. Usually you don't see those things being duplicated on the same day um, or at the exact same time. So uh, things like that really help me a lot when I'm working with data kind of by hand here in Excel. So I hope this will help you. And if you have any questions about this or anything, feel free to post them down below, as well as you'll find a link to my blog and all the other additional information that I have there. Thanks, and I'll see you back here soon. Hey, thanks for checking out my video. I really, really appreciate it. Now, I also have a blog, bensullins.com, in case you haven't visited that. On there, I have videos like this. I have code samples. I have full articles describing all the tips and tricks and everything that I want to share with you to help you in your career, as well as you can sign up for my weekly newsletter, which is basically a digest of all that, plus more stuff I found on the web that I found interesting that might be pertinent to you. So you can click this link here and go check that out. And again, I appreciate you watching this video and I'll see you back here soon.